you're thinking about buying a house in Japan, this is the first question you need to ask yourself. By successfully answering the question, you will save a lot of time and possibly a lot of money for your journey into Japanese property ownership. It's the end of 2023 and by now you've probably heard that there are 10 million empty houses in Japan and many of them are very, very cheap. And you're interested in property ownership in Japan because one, you love Japan and want to spend more time in Japan by owning a vacation home or two, you want to start a rental property business because the housing prices in your home country are super inflated. Over the past six months, I've spoken to over 60 people all over the world who are interested in buying a property in Japan. And the very first question I asked isn't about the budget, the location they want to buy, what kind of property or any of that, because most of them already have answers to those questions. So in this video, I'm going to share the very first question you need to ask yourself when buying a house in Japan and why it's very important for you to have an answer. If you're new here, my name is Shu. On this channel, I talk about real real estate investing, financial freedom in Japan. We help non-Japanese speakers in or outside of the country buy houses in Japan. Before I begin, I have a gift for you. If you want to learn how to buy a cheap house in Japan as a foreigner, I put together a free guide that will help you own your dream house or get started with real estate investing in Japan. Click the link below in the description. So what is the question? It's this. How will you plan to purchase the property? Well, it's simple because there are mainly just two ways to go about this. You either buy under your own name or through an entity like an LLC. Very straightforward. But let me tell you why this is important. It's going to impact the timeline and the initial cost of your purchase. So let's start with buying under your own name. If you were to take this path, your purchase process would be quicker and less expensive. But your asset isn't protected by an entity. So if you were to rent it out to a tenant and they get injured in the house that you own and they decide to sue you, they could come after your personal asset. The good news is that people in Japan rarely sue other people. So chances of this happening are probably pretty low. And more importantly, if you're not intending to rent it out to a tenant, it won't be an issue to begin with. With that said, who is this option for? Buying under your own name is for you if you're buying a vacation or second home in Japan. You already have a bank account in Japan and want to save money on entity formation costs. Buying under your own name is not for you if you want to build a rental portfolio in Japan and want limited liability. You want to obtain a business manager visa in Japan one day. Now let's move on to buying through an entity. In Japan, a business entity is called Hojin and there are a few types of Hojin, but mainly there are only two types, Kabushiki Kaisha, KK, or Godo Kaisha. Or GK. KK is a joint stock company, which is like the C Corp in the US and has been around since 1873. The GK is a limited liability company or LLC, which was originally modeled after the US LLC structure. It's been around since 2006 and can do most things that KKs can do with some unique benefits. So which one is better to run a rental business in Japan? Well, let's take a look at the pros of both types. The pros of KK are credibility and scalability. Since the KK has been around for over a century, your Japanese customers, employees, and business partners I feel it carries more credibility compared to a GK. KK also allows for a scalable organization with the ability to have a board of directors, list on the stock exchange, and raise money through selling shares. The pros of GK are low cost and simple. For example, KKs are required to, at minimum, annually hold shareholders meetings, publish financials, and submit other reports. Whereas GKs do not have any of those requirements. If a KK is set up with a board of directors, even more compliance is required, including holding quarterly board of director meetings and taking minutes as well as appointing a statutory auditor who is responsible for the financial integrity of the KK and must submit an auditor report at the end of the year. It sounds a lot of extra work. So in short, if you just want a simple entity in Japan that will give you limited liability at a low cost, a GK is a good option. If it makes you feel any better, the Japanese branches of some of the biggest businesses in the world are all GKs. Amazon Japan, Apple Japan, ExxonMobil Japan, to name a few. So now we know the differences between the two main entity types in Japan. If you don't live in Japan, but have your heart set on starting a rental business in Japan, you probably want to form a Godo Kaisha or GK. Here, I'm going to share with you what exactly you need to form a GK as a non-resident of Japan. Step one, find a local director. You actually don't need one to form an entity in Japan, but you will want one. And here's why. 
in order to form an entity in Japan, you'll need an office address. It can be an actual office you rent for thousands of dollars a month, or it can be a virtual office that you pay like 10 bucks a month. But here's the kicker. Most banks in Japan won't let you open a bank account with a virtual office address. They need to see that you have a physical address for your company. So you're going to need a bank account in Japan to collect rent from your tenants and make payments for your expenses to run your rental business. If you have a local director, this person can form an entity and open up a bank account for your company. Once that's done, they can be removed from your company, which leaves you with access to your company's bank account and everything you need. So for this reason, having a local director initially is key to forming an entity in Japan. When I say a local director, it sounds like someone who has a ton of business experience running a company. They don't have to be. They'll act more like a collaborator for your business. It's just someone who is a current resident of Japan and willing to help you. So who might this person be for you? Here are some examples. A family member, a close friend, a former colleague, or a third party company. Let's start with a family member. This could be your Japanese spouse's parent, sibling, aunt, or uncle, you name it. If you have a close family member who would be willing to do all the work I'm about to share with you, you're in luck. You already have an existing relationship with this person, so the chances of them helping you with this is probably high. I would be sure to treat them to a nice dinner or even a vacation if you're not paying them for helping you though. How about a close friend or a former colleague? I would make sure you can trust this person and have something in writing that this is a partnership between you and them so that if anything goes south, you have a binding document. I would make sure to compensate this person because they'll be taking on responsibilities. Possibly they might be a future business partner, especially if they have similar goals as you and are interested in becoming the local operator of your rental business. A third party company is also an option, but this is probably the most costly. You can pay for the service, but you probably end up spending thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars for this type of service. Step two, form an agreement with your local director. Once you've identified your local director, have a conversation with them and let them know exactly why you need their help and if they would be willing to help you. Go through what they'll need to do and set expectations. If they take on this role, they'll likely have multiple visits to a local tax office and a bank and will be asked to fill out many forms. You're asking for a lot of their time, so make sure you explain what's expected of them. Once they agree, I would make sure that you have a written agreement with your local director that their job is to form an entity and open a bank account on behalf of you. And they will be removed from the company after their tasks have been completed, unless you want them to stay in your company long term. Step three, form an entity. There are a few ways to form an entity. One, have your local director do everything by themselves, which will require filling out documents and visits to the tax office. Two, use online websites like this one, which will save you costs and visits to the tax office. And three, hire a bilingual legal professional to facilitate this process. I highly recommend you to go with option three and hire a professional to help you with this. Yes, this will cost you the most out of these three options, but not only are you making this process easier for you, but more importantly, for your local director. You want to make their job as easy as possible. The cost to hire a legal professional is probably about a few thousand dollars and they can form an entity in a few weeks or less. But remember, this is a one-time cost. Step four, open a bank account. After your company is registered, the local director can apply to open a bank account under your company's name at the bank. After that, the bank account can be opened. The local director will share the login info for your company's bank account so that you can have access to it. When opening a bank account under your company's name, the company's seal and other documents are required. You can either make this yourself online or hire someone to prepare your company seal or hunkle. If you hire a legal professional, this is usually part of their service. Your local director will bring the seal to the bank to open up a bank account. But opening a bank account under a company name requires a screening process. And basically, it's not very easy to open a bank account for a new company. Your company also needs to have a physical address in Japan. Something for you to make sure with your local director is that they would be okay with you using their address as an office if you don't plan on getting a dedicated office for your company at least in the beginning. Ultimately, it's up to the bank to decide whether it can be open or not. So be sure to do your research on which banks are more likely to open a bank account for a new company. There you have it. This was an episode on the first question you need to ask yourself before buying a house in Japan as a non-resident. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're interested in learning more about everything you need to know about real estate investing in Japan, be sure to subscribe to this channel so you won't miss out on new episodes. And don't forget to download the free guide, How to Buy a Cheap House in Japan. Japan as a foreigner and watch this video next for more. See you in the next one.